Hello again everyone, I'm Asil and this is the second video in my series titled Scala and Bitcoin where I, along with you my viewers, uh, approach uh, building a Bitcoin exchange using Scala. Okay, so I'm sorry for the long delay, it's been at least two weeks a little more now since the first video um, I had a couple of things I had to deal with I actually dropped out of my master's degree in electrical engineering um, I was one semester in but for good reason of course um, I got an acceptance to a top uh, PhD program in the United States um, so I'll be starting uh, a PhD in electrical engineering at Georgia Tech uh, this fall So I'll be moving there um, by the end of the summer. Anyway, so back to the uh, to the video. So, in the first video, we covered, as you can see here, we have little check boxes. We've covered these steps, um, basically introducing the development environment um, we'll be using for the remainder of the tutorial. I hope it's not a tutorial actually; it's a series, but you get the point. Um, but, but today, um, I was actually, before I started recording this video, I was actually looking through these steps, and I don't think we'll be able to cover all of them. Um, we'll just be able to cover the first one for too many reasons. Firstly, I don't want to make a long video. And secondly, uh, it'll be too many, you know, there'll be too many, uh, too much information, too many different concepts to cover, so it'll get confusing even both for you and me, I mean, and the viewer, so... So we'll just cover uh, this first one here. Anyway, so I have the first to-do item here ticked, and that is I've uh, created GitHub repo for the project. Yay! It's available on GitHub right now. The link is here, and I will add the link to the description, so no need to you know type it out. Great. So now on to step two, which is the main focus of this video here, which is we're going to make a simple build that uses both Spray JSON and Akka Actor, both libraries, uh, mainly to make sure that our build is working well and to give ourselves an overview of how these two libraries work in the most simplest terms possible. So this is by in no way a comprehensive tutorial about Akka Actors or parsing JSON using Spray. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, so... The repo, as I told you, is available uh, over here. Okay, that's the link. I have two commits already up. One thing I'd like you to note, uh, everyone, is that I've introduced a change to the SPT, uh, the build SPT file. And that is that I was using in the previous video an incorrect version of Aka Actor. I was using 2.3.6. Must have copied it incorrectly or something. So I'll mention there's a point in this tutorial, just change it to 2.4.7 to avoid a, a small problem that it could occur as you're following along if you're following along uh, with the code all right so that's that great so let's go back to our main Scala file it is as we left it except for a small change in the package name but otherwise it's pretty damn straightforward right just simple main function in a main object printing hello world all right so now we'd like to again if we go back we'd like to um, Test out spray JSON actor. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll I'll, I'll quickly uh, show you how to parse some JSON and then um, convert it back into a string um, using uh, spray JSON, and then we'll um, we'll move on to talking about Aka actor. Okay, and that'll be a bit longer because of some uh, some uh, overhead uh, introduced when you're using Aka actor. All right, so let's jump uh, into the, into the uh, overview of Spray JSON. So the basic idea is Spray JSON allows us to parse JSON. Okay, it allows us to convert from uh, standard Scala objects or custom Scala objects into a string representation in JSON form, and vice versa, convert from JSON uh, string JSON format like something you'd receive from an API into a native Scala object. Okay. So we'll be doing that second one right there. We'll have a string of valid JSON, and let's say we have um, 
keep things simple, we'll make it, um, uh, sorry here, we'll make it a string, let's say name I'll see, which is me, and my age is 10. Now I've purposely made this a string for a reason you'll see in a moment. Now this is a JSON representation, all right, in string format. So let's say you, you query an API and it returns this response, okay, a nice uh, JSON object. Now we want to extract the information, right? You want to extract the name or you want to extract the age from this JSON. All right. So what do you do? You'll create a JSON AST and we'll just say uh, AST is equal to s.parse JSON. Now this s.parse JSON is implicitly introduced. Um, you need to add this import here. So import uh, default JSON protocol. I think it's either this one. I believe it's this one, but it could be this one. But anyways, this is introduced by spray JSON, okay? So now we have uh, the JSON AST, the abstract uh, syntax tree. But now we want to convert it into a Scala object. So finally, what we can do is we can convert it to an object, which is AS2.convert2, okay? And we have to provide a type. Now the type has to match the incoming JSON, right? So if it was like, let's say, we'll add another example here. Um, Let's say we have basically a list of integers, okay? So if if right here, we say, we're, we're looking at S right now, if we say S is a list of integers, we will get an error, okay? So you have to define the type correctly, otherwise it'll raise an exception. So what is our type here? We have a map of string to string, okay? You can see it, right? It's a map. It's like a key value, key value, okay? Great. So now I have the object. Finally, we'll just print out this object. Um, so we can see that it's actually converted from this to a native Scala map. All right, so let's go back to our uh, terminal. And let's just spt run to compile and run the program. And let's see what happens. We should get, that's it. We should get a nice map that says name Asil age 10. Awesome. So we just converted a JSON object in string format to a native Scala object. All right. So now let's try the second one uh, very quickly. Uh, we can do the same. We just convert this to P and we do the same thing. And in this case, we will get an error, right? We, it's not a map string, um, a map of string string, but it's actually a list of int. And we'll do that again, and we should get a nice list of integers uh, containing 1, 2, and 3. Awesome, there you have it. Okay, so that's a quick overview to uh, spray JSON. There is a, a nice little quick uh, overview of how to use it on the, on the spray JSON GitHub page. Um, this is like a basic, really basic overview. And there is um, more information about what, how to, how to uh, parse more complex objects uh, from JSON string into Scala objects, vice versa. Okay, so you can look at that if you want. But we won't need that now. Awesome. So that's that covers uh, spray JSON. Let's leave this here. Um, let's leave this here actually, and just say this is spray. And my spelling is bad. Okay. Now, this is the second part of the tutorial, we're going to look at ACA. Okay, so, it's not a tutorial, I mean, I keep messing this up, it's a series, okay, it's a series. Whenever I say tutorial, just substitute that with series. Okay, so, as for ACA, we're using ACA actor, okay, so, obviously, we first need to import ACA actor. So, just say, import ACA actor dot everything. Awesome. So, uh, what we're going to do, remember, we're just going to do something really, really basic. So my idea is we'll just uh, create a simple um, actor that will, you send the actor a message. So remember, uh, an, ACA, uh, an, ACA, an actor in ACA is uh, basically you communicate with the actor via messages. So you can send messages to the actor and the actor can send messages back, depending on whether or not you're also an actor. So, we'll communicate with the actor by sending messages to it. 
So the actor we want to write is an echo actor. We'll call it an echo actor. And this echo actor, basically, whatever you send it, whatever message you send it, it will echo that to the standard output. Okay, so it will log that to the output. That's all we want to do. It's really simple. You give it something, it just echoes that, just prints it onto the command line. Really simple. No need for an actor. It's an overcomplicated approach, but it's just for demonstration, for demonstrative purposes. So we have to define the actor. Let's call it echo actor. We'll define it here, and it must extend actor. Okay. Um, and then we notice that there's a squiggly line. We the uh, def, uh, echo actor needs to implement a receive method. Um, and yeah, so that's it. Awesome. Then inside the receive method, we just match the different cases we get and well we're going to match all cases and we're going to say basically um we'll just uh actually match uh, we'll yeah we'll match anything and we'll just print that to the standard output okay that's it really simple really stupid no need for an actor <laughs> obviously okay so now we have the actor it looks awesome it works well okay so how do we spawn this actor how do we run this actor so that it can do our, our the work we need to do well in Aka we need whenever we're dealing with actors we need an actor system and the actor system is like the heart of the actor system I mean the name is quite descriptive and this actor system is basically the root node of the actor graph so everything, all the other actors in your program are children of your actor system. So let's create our system. And it's done like this. Actor system. Let me give it a name. We'll just call it uh, hello-bitcoin. Name of the project. So now we have the actor system. We can use the actor system to introduce uh, uh, actors that will do our bidding. Okay. This is not the only way to start actors. You can also start actors from within other actors. So you could have, let's say, for example, we'll have the actor system as the root node. Then we'll have a couple of children. And each of those actors, which are children of the root, can have their own sub-children and so on. But for this example, we just need the root node, the uh, system. So now we'll define our actor. And the way we define an actor is we don't actually say new echo actor no that's against i mean that's not how aka was designed and there are many interesting reasons for why this is but i won't get into that and mainly because i have no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> but uh all i can tell you is that from my from what i read in the docs i mean it makes sense okay but the general idea is that we will ask the system okay to create an actor um, we'll give some a props object uh, of type echo actor and we'll give our actor a name. Just say echo actor. Okay. Now, the important thing to note here is that the return type, the value, the type of the value stored here is not type echo actor, but it's an actor ref. So, all it does, this actor variable here, all it does is point to the actor somewhere, right? We don't actually have a direct we don't have direct access to the underlying actor object we just have an access to a reference to the object and again this is done for many uh, the philosophy behind this is really deep again I have no idea at all um, why that is but I just know barely enough to to write this code okay so now I have our actor we have our actor ref now finally we can send the message to the actor and we just do this using the tell syntax nice exclamation mark we say tell the actor and we'll give it a couple messages we'll say hello and then we'll just uh, create a new one which says uh, one two three remember it can accept any type because we've defined it like that it's not a good design but we've defined it that way and finally just say bye okay lastly we want to free up all the resources consumed or held by the actor system be it thread pools or threads or so on so we can just do a nice system determinant and this is the step actually that will not work if you're using um aka actor 2.2.6 okay so be careful about that all right then so what will happen here is we will send our actor we have a single actor running only one 
we will send it hello it will print hello we'll send it one two three it will print one two three we'll send it a list it'll print the list finally it'll print bye okay and this will all be done to the standard output so we'll go back here we'll run sbt we'll build rebuild and uh, run our program oops we have a compilation failure hmm so I'm using the case syntax incorrectly here. No worries. <coughs> let's just um, let's just match against different types, um, and then just uh, print them. So we'll do it like a, a naive way. Um, we'll do int, and um, we'll do a list event okay i know it looks kind of silly but we'll just do that for now let's recompile and it should work i'm assuming okay so there's non-variable type argument in the panel list is unchecked what a bunch of warnings but it worked absolutely fine so if we go back here we get hello we get one two three we get this one two three we get back Again, just forget about this. This is a hacky solution, not correct um, at all. But uh, what you need to keep in mind is that in Aka, we send messages, we set, we start an actor, and we can only we just send messages to it, and it receives those messages and handles them however it wants. It could like forward the message to another actor. It could perform some I/O, perform a network request. And so on and so forth. So it's a really, um, it's a really complicated uh, system, and we've just barely scratched the surface here. Okay. Anyways, so I think that is a good enough uh, overview of this. Um, I think I'll shift this down to day three, whenever that is. Um, but, but I think that should be clear. We have a sample build that's working fine. That uses both spray JSON and Arca Active. Okay. Um, in the next video, we'll start looking into Bitcoin now. Finally, yay! And um, we'll start looking at the RPC uh, documentation, which is available um, over here on the Bitcoin Developer Reference. I'll link it in the next video, hopefully. And it has like a really um, detailed kind of. Uh, documentation for the remote procedure call interface and we'll look through that and we will start uh, hopefully to write a simple JSON RPC interface at least for some of the uh, some of the different request types okay then um, so thank you for listening and um, I mean be sure to subscribe if you like the content um, if you have any questions if you have any suggestions for future videos or for this video uh, please don't hesitate to use the comment section. Um, yeah, see you next time.